I see some of you are like, yeah. Yay. I've got a 14-hour trip home for our British friends. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome. Um, you are in the Yes And workshop. My name is Julia Cuppy, and I am here today representing a regional theater company called La Jolla Playhouse. And uh, I am going to be presenting with this fine fellow next to mm -hmm. me here. Thank you. Your Thank name you. is what, sir? Yeah, so I'm Adam Cuppy, and I'm from Coding Zeal. We are a software consultancy, and we specialize in web and mobile applications. Uh, but more importantly, we make a lot of fun of ourselves. That's true. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, we are married. It's no, we are not brother and sister. Yeah. We don't want to confuse that. Nope. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so we're going to get started right off the bat today. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with improv, raise your hand. Um, excellent. Very good. So some of you are like, maybe, maybe not. All right. Well, today you're going to connect uh, how skills required in improv um, can enhance your own collaboration and communication skills in your own lives. Um, so that's what we're going to uh, attempt today. Why are we here, though, Mr. Cuppy, even further? Well, I forgot I was doing these slides. Yeah, so those were thus. Yeah, here we are. Okay, so why are we here? So the biggest thing is, uh, the big question is, why would you want to learn about improv in conjunction with like programming and software development? And this is something that I've kind of like toiled around in my own head for a really long time. And when we submitted this talk, it was like, let's hope we can come to a conclusion on that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that here's the deal, is that the skills required to perform improv can be used as an additive technology for creating ideas. And this is where it becomes really important, is that for all of us, as we've learned not just at this conference but many times over, is that a lot of the things that we're going to learn um, and a lot of things we do are totally exploratory, right? That's like almost the nature of our job. Our, our value is almost at its most uh, presented at a time in which we're creating something new. So improv is a great opportunity to be able to kind of correlate those two because you're exploring on ideas that you've not explored on before. That's the whole idea, right? Any In a pretty low-risk environment. Yeah, super low risk, yeah. right? So in the case of most improv scenarios is that everyone goes into it knowing that you're going to fail a lot. Yeah. Right? You're going to fall down a lot. And in improv, that or actually failure is a gift. Mistakes are gifts that can take us in places we never expected. Um, and we like to celebrate them in improv. So we're going to actually practice um, failing a lot uh, to start off uh, this workshop. How does that sound? Yeah. Yes. Um, so, with, <laughs> woo -woo! Uh, so with that being said, we do actually have to just set some ground rules. Yes. Um, it's really important that when we start doing these type of exercises that we have a safe environment that we all can feel like we can take some risks. Um, even though maybe it seems low, but for some it might actually be pretty embarrassing to talk in front of people. And Actually, psychology today says, uh, you know what the number one fear is for most people? Public speaking. You know what number two is? Death. Death. So to go with the death theme of our conference, I just needed to sneak that in there. We're going to do the thing that's even worse than death. <laughs> yes. Uh, so with that being said, our uh, safe environment, we're just going to put four parameters for us to talk about. So we need to turn off the internal editor in our heads of like, wait a second, I don't think uh, I can do that because I'm going to look stupid. Nope, that needs to be shut off for a moment. Um, we need to be fully present with our partner. That might mean that I actually want to ask you to um, go to someone you might not know and say, hi, my name is, and then you decide to share your real name or not. Um, yeah. You can improv that if you want to. Yeah. Yes, and. Uh, the mm -hmm. next thing is to uh, laugh with, never at. In improv, we're laughing a lot. It's a byproduct of what um, the art form does. So we just want to make sure we're laughing with each other, never at. And then also asking permission, making sure that we are being aware of the, in, the other in the, in the scenario. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is the, these only apply to improv. They'll have no relationship to the rest of your life in your work <laughs> environment. Yeah, so just know... None of this will relate outside of this. Okay, so can we all commit to this safe environment for the next 40 minutes? Yes. yes. Excellent, great, cool. Sweet. All right, so we're going to start with a very low-risk activity. Uh, Mr. Cappy, take it away. Okay, so here's the, the basic thing. is You don't have to really do much of anything other than if what I happen to say is true for you, all you got to do is stand up. That's it. It's That's that it. simple. Okay. Uh, you like ice cream. Wow. Wow, surprise. But there are some lactose intolerant okay. people out there, I see. That's I right, see you. that's right. There's some. I see you. Okay, sit down. Okay. You are a morning person. 
<laughs> okay. All right, excellent. Nice. Okay. Um, how about you live outside? Uh, you live outside North America. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome. Interesting. And if you're not a morning person and lives outside North America, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have a degree in something other than software engineering. Um, also, an alternative is you don't have a degree at all. So. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, wow. Make sure to look around. Like, yeah, get to know around. these. You are like, not alone. These are the people that are just like you. Okay, yeah, great. That's awesome. All right. So next one is you have experienced imposter imposter syndrome while working in this industry. Whew. Yeah, wow, okay. Fantastic, okay. And then uh, the next, uh, this is a subtle one, but you believe Vim is the superior editor? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I don't know how that got on this list, okay. <laughs> uh, the next is you believe the quality, that quality interaction between people is critical to success. Mm. Excellente, all right, very good. Excellent. Well, you did so great. Woo! Nice yeah, work. Yeah, excellent. Big success. Look at that low risk you took. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, like I said earlier, improv uh, loves failure. They're considered gifts. Mistakes are gifts. These gifts can take us in these uh, ways and places that we never imagined, and they turn into these hilarious moments. Now, that's a byproduct. Comedy is a byproduct, right? What um, You never want to try to be funny in improv because that actually turns out to be not funny. It's actually the honest, spontaneous reaction to what's happening on stage. Um, a lot of those... Uh, Good examples of that actually occurred during the game show yesterday uh, when a, a, so, um, a redhead of sorts on the panel decided to um, fail a lot, actually. I didn't decide to fail. <laughs> okay, well, you can think what you want. Um, <laughs> but in the end, those were some spontaneous moments they did not plan for. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, very good. Another panelist in the room, what, were anything planned beforehand? Absolutely not. No, that's correct. No. Nope. So it's important for us to allow ourselves to fail and celebrate that failure. So we're going to do a little quick exercise uh, to illustrate that. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Uh, stand up for a moment. Yep. Okay, and I, all I want you to do is find a partner. Find one other person, and if you can't find a partner, just put your hand up in the air. If somehow you end up as the odd man or woman uh, out, okay? Oh, we have one here. Um, okay, Need one and one, here. there you go. Charles, come, over here. Come find each other. Okay, great. You found a partner. Okay, first thing you do is make sure you know the other person's name. If you don't want to ask, look down. <laughs> Perfect, very successful, excellent, excellent. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Now, if you were at the, uh, if you were at the Lightning Talks yesterday, this is gonna sound very familiar to you, but we're making a modification to it. So this is in fact called one, two, three. But instead of doing what we did with ABC, where I asked you to, you and your partner go from A to Z, back and forth, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we're not doing that part. We're cutting right to the chase and we're going to one, two, three, and then you come back to one. So it's gonna look and sound something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. It's gonna look something like that. <laughs> All right, and that's all you have to do. So oh. between you and your part. But if they pause or hesitate or if you overlap, you have to start over again. That's right. That's yeah, it. so if you pause or hesitate, overlap, whatever that might be, you have to start all over again at one. Again, one, two, three, you're not going past three. Pause or hesitate, start at one. You ready? And go. And go. <laughs> and 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Zero. Now, how many of you got confused when I started counting down from three, two, or one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, how many of you were able to make it, let's say, 10 iterations? Oh, okay. There's some pretty awesome people. Okay, so if you raised your hand but your partner didn't, you probably shouldn't have raised your hand. <laughs> Okay, very good. All right, so how did it feel like when you messed up, actually? Anybody get frustrated by that? Throw something out. Hilarious. Hilarious? You were frustrated, yes? Frustrated, very good. A little good. bit harder than you had thought originally. Okay, good. Um, what about your body language could you potentially reflect on? What happened to your body when you, were, when you did that? Did anyone do a, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or... Okay, there's so many different. Okay. Well, we are actually... Um, 
subconsciously programmed from birth in our society that failure means a punishment. And sometimes our body language will reflect that in how we result, how we reflect, uh, how we react, that's the word I was looking for, to when we fail. Um, how many of you started to notice your partner failing more than you? If you raise your hand oh, and your partner did Oh, come on, be real. I know, many of us know we're starting to figure out what they need to do better to make this better, right? Okay. So, this time, we're going to do it again. This time, if your partner fails, I need you to assume that it is your fault. It's your fault. Um, because we really start to bond when we start to fail together without blame. So, we're going to do it again. Um, this time, we're going to do the one, two, three, one, two, three. But if someone fails, we're going to celebrate it by going and doing our best. I need you to just illustrate this. Your best 10 point landing and going, aha! No, ta da! Oh, ta da! <laughs> All right, 10 point landing. I need to see like commitments. One, All two, right. three. And yeah. begin. Oh, 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 sorry. One last thing. I'm so sorry. One last thing. Now, number one is a clap. Now what it looks like is this. Oh, here we go. Two. Three. Two. Three. Two. Three. Ta-da! <laughs> All right. You have 30 seconds. Go. Clap on one. Okay, and stop on 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, stop in 5, 4, four 3, three two, 2, 1, one and hold. And back. Okay, fantastic, Excellent. and hold. Round, round of applause. Nice job, you guys. Uh, So in the second round, uh, how did it feel doing the exercise in a, compared to the first time? Exhausting. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was great. There was celebration happening. What else? Supportive recovery. What was that? Recovery what? Faster recovery. Interesting. Okay, very good. Very good. Um, we, we like to say these are the moments where we like to shoot for average and fail cheerfully in these moments because then we have an easier access to do things like recover faster. So that's so cool. Great job. Um, it is also important that as we move to the next thing, um, in our yes and mindset, we have yes and fail being our first point that we just illustrated. The second point is talking about Yes and build. Okay, we're going to talk more about that in a second. But before we go back, um, well, before we go ahead, I want to say one last thing about failure. And that is, we as a community need to start redefining what failure means, right? Failure is actually an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to have insight into a solution we never imagined before. Uh, many of you probably know the most, one of the most popular failure stories out there um, in a little company called 3M, where they started to create uh, a super duty uh, adhesive for building planes. And that particular engineer screwed up, failed big time actually, and created a little um, like sticky substance that now are used on the little tiny pieces of paper that are on the chairs in the room called a post-it. And now how many of you probably use post-its in your everyday life? Yes, okay, that's just a great big win that would never have happened if they didn't allow themselves to fail. Um, we're going to use those post-it notes here in just a second, too. All right, so we're going to go on with our yes and build point. And Mr. Cup, you want to lead us? All right, so here's what we're going to do. Here's the next one. So here's what I want you to do is you're not going to do this with your current partner. I want you to find a new partner. New partner. And remember, do the first thing of introduce yourself. And if you don't want to ask, look down. Okay, good. And once you've found your partner, I want you to put your hands up in the air like this. Found your partner, put your hands in the air like this. If you're still missing a partner, this is going to be... Oh, no, 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 you're good. You're good. Keep your hands in the air. Perfect. No, you're perfect. Okay, good. Okay, drop your hand. Is anybody missing a partner by chance? Okay, there oh, you go. Look to your right left there. and right. Left and right. Perfect. You got friends. it. Friends. There you go. Okay, so this is called two old friends. Now, here's what I, uh, here's what I want you to... Uh, we need sorry, two sorry, sorry. We need two volunteers for starters. So you can actually go ahead and sit down, but give me two volunteers. There's one in the back. Perfect. One more. Yep. 
Hero, Two. come on up. Two, perfect, Hero. And where did my, oh, she's, she's coming. coming. All right, she's come coming. on up. D don't forget your partner, because you're going to go back to them in a second. Yep, stick with your partner, stick with your partner. You're not going to need your yeah, laptop yeah, yeah. anyway. All right. All right, Hero. Ifat. Ifat, fantastic. Good to meet you both to each other. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right, so this is called Two Old Friends. Now, for every improv scene, if you've ever seen something like Whose Line Is It Anyway, or if you've ever done improv yourself, uh, you might not know this acronym, but you've seen it done, and it's called CROW. And it's an acronym for uh, character, relationship, objective, and where. So you'll hear them yell it out in the beginning. They'll be like, give me a character. Give me a character. Uh, what's their relationship? Uh, what's their objective? What are they trying to do? And then where are they? Okay, that's CROW. Now, this is kind of a, a hook because every scene is built off of this crow, right? So that's the, so when they're like, how do you, how do they do that? They just make it up like that. This is part of the formula and the recipe. Okay, but we're going we're gonna to provide this for them today, so we're not going to need your participation quite yet, but we're going to give them the crow, the character relationship objective and where, and where they're located. Okay, so the first is, is that you are both two old friends who are Ruby comp participants. Right? Not a stretch. Not a stretch, right? This is good. Now, the character you are is you are two old friends, all right? And what you are going to do, your objective is that you're going to recall an old memory. You're going to recall an old memory, all right? And where you are located is in this room. So it's as if you were meeting yourself as two old friends recalling in this room uh, long ago, okay? Now, here's the hook of what you're going to do is whenever one of you says something like, oh, it was great to, so if I was to come up to Julia, oh, it's been so long. Yes, and I decided to go on a walkabout in Australia for the last 20 years. Yes, and you're only 22 years old. When did you start? <laughs> well, we start them young in my family. Yes, so the idea here is you want to start every sentence with yes and, all right? Now, we don't normally do that in practice, of course. Raise your hand if you don't really do that in practice. <laughs> Wow, okay, all right, uh, but that's the idea, all right, fair enough. Now here's what I want you to do is I want you to scooch down here a little bit, and of course, in, in theater, we always make sure we talk to the person in the very back of the room, all right? So, speak up, are you ready to fail? Are we ready to help them fail? Woo! All right, wonderful. Don't worry, this won't last long, but remember, you are a RubyConf participant, you are two old friends, you are recalling an old memory, and you know what, you're just in this room. Okay, fair enough. Hero, why don't you start us off? Hi, Pat. Uh, it's been a long time. Yes, and I remember the last time we were together. Yes, and it was three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Sandy Mess was there as well. Oh, yes, and I enjoyed her talk very, very much, and uh, this year's too. <laughs> yes, and I really wish that she had been in this room to do this activity with us. Yes, and maybe we should go find her. <laughs> Don't forget your objective, recall an old memory. <laughs> yes, and we can reminisce with her about our old memory. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like the uh, seafood gumbo today. <laughs> yes, and it reminds me of the seafood gumbo from three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I really had a lot of Tabasco in the... Uh, see, the gumbo from three years ago. <laughs> yes, and I hope you really learned your lesson. <laughs> yes, and I had a, a wonderful time in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, now wrap it up. Now close up the scene. Bring it to a conclusion. Um, yes, and I'm glad that you are here today with less Tabasco in your stomach. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. All right, so find that partner that you were just with, and you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're gonna be two old friends here at RubyConf recalling an old memory using yes and at the beginning of each of your replies, all right? On your mark, get set, go. Uh, go ahead and jump in on their seat. Uh, come on, uh, you wanna do it with her?
Close up your scene. Make sure to close up your scene. Bring your story to a conclusion. And 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Oh, okay. All right, 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and hands up. Nice, and celebrate. Woo! Okay, so I'm gonna walk around and I wanna hear about your memory. What was your memory? Uh, last year's uh, Matz's conversation. Okay, fantastic, tell me, what happened as two old friends during Matz's conversation? Uh, we noticed the tortoise in the hair. <laughs> noticed the tortoise in the hair, outstanding. Tell me about your two old friends. Uh, we went skydiving 10 years ago. Really? As Rubicon participants? Yeah, didn't, didn't go well. I'd, I'd broken a leg, but we're, we're going again today, so. Okay, fantastic. All right, anyone else have a wildly ridiculous story? Here. Yes, sir. Where'd you go? Post-it notes were invented in this very room at <gasps> Rubicon. What? <laughs> there was glue everywhere. It was almost tragic. Excellent. A, tra a tragic experience. Dr. Hartle, where did you go? Uh, we went uh, back in time to uh, our uh, university days where he actually graduated without attending, and it's because we helped, like, I kind of helped him out, and we were thinking about how uh, beer was, uh, was involved and decided to go get... Go. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Did anybody end up off this planet? Oh! oh. All right. Where'd you end up? Well, we were rescued from... Uh, so we were in the desert on a camel on either hump, get really, really drunk, and we were out of water, so we killed the camel, and then we had no way to get back, but the alien saved us. And, yeah. Wow! Like you do. <laughs> all right, and one more, one more. I'm going to go all the way over here to the very back, in the very back of the room. Where did you guys end up? Tell me about your story of two old friends. Go. We committed murder. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening at this conference? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Excellent work. Excellent work. Wow. Okay. So uh, let's let's talk about how did it feel to yes and your partner? How did it feel? Anyone throw it out? Unnatural. unnatural. Okay. Can we say why? Why did it feel unnatural? <laughs> That's right. Because actually many of us start our sentences in a conversation in a brainstorming sessions potentially with your coworkers by saying yes, but... We are the types that aren't going to blatantly say, no, that's a horrible idea. No, we're going to be polite and kind and say, yes. But did you think of this? Or but did you think of that? Or but I don't think that's a good idea, right? So yes, but is a concept that we want to try to stay away from in the yes and mindset. Because yes, but means that you're blocking the offer of the other person. To really fully build on the other person's ideas, you have to accept whatever that idea is and build upon it. Yes, but is actually very effective when you're wanting incremental change because it allows you to really criti critically think about what each small step of the process is. But yes, and can help you break the mold into new worlds for some over there and new ideas that we would never have been able to figure out um, just being in that yes, but mindset. So the yes, and mindset allows us even to go places and break that mold. And then uh, there was one more thought that I had there. Why am I forgetting it? Yes, and it was... No, I'm just kidding. No. Oh, I remember, I remember. So there's a lot of research actually out there that says we can't create and critique at the same time. So if you're always being in a yes, but place, you're critiquing every single thing and not really allowing the possibilities to occur. 
Yeah, so if you think about this in a lot of your software teams, because um, uh, I experience this all the time um, as far as even a project manager or product manager as well as uh, an engineer on a team, which is um, oftentimes uh, I find myself jumping two steps ahead, and so I'll find myself in a no but mindset or a yes but mindset really quickly. But what I've discovered is, is that, like she was saying, yes but can be incredibly powerful when you're trying to iterate on something and or trying to refine something, which is often what we're doing, is we're trying to find a, maybe a more ideal scenario or we're trying to factor in all the, all the bits and pieces. So there's an alternative to this that is yes and at the same time, where you're basically accepting and adopting that there's an idea at play that might have merit, we just don't know what it is yet, there's concerns about it, but let's factor this other stuff into this entire scenario to think about, well, what are the things we might not be thinking about now that we might need to think about later? And similarly, you might find that in your teams that this is something that you separate. So uh, there's a, uh, on our team we have a, a creative department and we ha I have a chief creative officer that I work with a lot. And so we have to, we enter in a meeting with this mindset of like, let's not critique what's wrong about this right now. Like, let's not beat that up. Let's just pretend like it all worked out. Right? Let's just pretend for a moment that that's the case. And it's amazing where we end up. And then we kind of take and kind of derive, well, what things about this do we get really excited about, do we really, really love? And let's move that into something where we still, we start to really refine it. Because again, because this totally, when she was telling me this, like it totally resonated, resonated for me that you can't create and critique at the same time. I was like, well, no kidding. Like that happens all the time. So you create, then you go back and you can critique. Great, and so there's a third point that we want to share with you regarding the yes and mindset, and that is the yes and share part of it. Um, we have to prioritize shared experiences within our industry because these shared experiences that we're having even right now develops um, our teams to be more sustainable um, and give us the room actually for more opportunities to come out of it. Um, and we bond over the success and failing, sharing both of those two things um, as a team and uh, celebrating them together and bonding in that way, failing in that way, and then sharing those experiences help us create those new revolutionary ideas. Um, so we're going to try this uh, yes and share with this, an exercise I've actually never tried with this large of a group before, so I'm really excited. Um, I know, I know it's a little higher risk here, folks, um, but know that it's not going to ask of you to do too much. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to up the ante, and I'm going to ask you to do a seeming, seemingly impossible task. That here, at this, um, we're going to act as an ensemble. The uh, Latin word of the uh, meaning of that word in Latin is at the same time. Ensemble means to act as at the same time. We, as an entire group of, how many of us are in here? Probably a little over 100 people or so, probably, are going to clap all at the same time without any type of communication. No, no, no. One clap all at the same time, all together as an ensemble. And here in, uh, in improv, that's what we are. We are an ensemble of people working together to for a common goal. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to just see how long it takes us for a moment, okay? Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, last thing, last thing, last thing. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm a little nervous about this. Again, I've never tried this before. We have to be fully present. To be able to do this, we have to look around. We need to know who's around us, behind us, in front of us. Um, we have to have the awareness of the room. We okay, have to know so, the relationship uh, of each other in the room. So here's what... Yes, so let's get into a large circle because we actually have enough people. So yeah, we can do you, it. You can consume as much, but move quickly so we don't run out of time. But one large circle. Okay, and for those of you who love puzzles and riddles, there's not some secret to this. There isn't. Okay, it's as simple as it sounds and as hard as it uh, appears to be. And I want to ask one question. What happens if we fail? Yeah. <laughs> nothing, you guys, it's not brain surgery. We're just doing improv. So nothing's going to happen. But let's see if we can actually do this and achieve this together. Ta-da! <laughs> just one? No, no, no. So one clap at one time as one unit. That's it.
<laughs> That's nice work. Celebrate your wonderful success. All right, you go back to your seats now. Well, wow, they're really in tune with one another. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good. Nice work. Good thing there weren't three times this size. <laughs> that would have been really tough. But nice work. Nice work, yeah. How did we get there? How did we get there? Patience, paying attention. What else? Rhythm. Rhythm. Okay, so we got into a pattern that we all could start to understand. Practice. Intuition. Intuition, all right, being aware. Practice. Good timing, yeah, okay, good. It kept going. It kept going, okay, so we started to find what was right and didn't just continued doing that? All right, great. That's nice, nice. Yeah. You guys, in one moment, in one time, we created uh, this sense of ensemble. So nice work. That's yeah. great. That's great. I'm impressed. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> without a doubt. Yeah, so this is something that um, you can find. Uh, here's generally what I've experienced happen in this scenario that you can look out for, because it's actually, so this, a lot of this stuff has come from things that you do as an ensemble, especially in a play or some sort of group think, right, is, you know, think about it. Um, just out of curiosity, how many of you have actually been an actor in a play as community theater, as professional as it might be? Or a backstage crew. Uh, yeah. So there's a natural harmony that will occur, right? Well, the, the goal is to get into that place. Now, there's something that we say a lot in acting, um, and that is acting is reacting. So it's this idea that it's not about what you say, it's about how you react to what someone else says. And this is like a really important kind of component to a lot of the things that we do too. At our company, we do a lot of pair programming. Your company may or may not do that, but it's a way for us to kind of have that really tight cycle of feedback that very, basically simulates that exact same response and feedback cycle that will occur. Well, you could do things like this, and there's a lot of different variations on this exact same type of exercise that you can integrate into your company. And, and I will throw out an idea. Uh, raise your hand if you do a daily stand-up. Okay, wonderful. So if, as a leader on your team, and that does not necess necessarily mean you have hierarchy in your company, just as somebody who you can lead and, and show as a guide, um, as a guide this is something you can do at a time either every single morning. At our company, we do one power clap that closes up our meeting, and at some level, we do exactly that for this very reason. It gets everybody on the same heartbeat. We're one ensemble. Then we split off and do projects, sure, but we're going to come back to this heartbeat. This is us. Boom. And go. Simple, something easy that you can all do. So think about that. Great. And uh, just to close things up, because we're almost out of time, this yes and mindset means that we say yes and fail. We say yes and build onto one another's ideas. We say yes and, and share and at the same time be an ensemble experiencing um, those, those you know, moments to fail and succeed together. Um, and then you'll create the yes and mindset that we hope that you all actually can start to um, put into your own practice. So here's the deal is, you know, we're only in a matter of only 40 minutes and we're about at time. In only 40 minutes, we have very little time to go over we a lot of the We scratch the surface. Of yeah, of possible. all the things you can do, right? But here's the thing is that there is a lot of other, uh, we'll call them improv games at the very least, that you can start to integrate into your teams. So here's what we did. And I highly encourage you all to go here. So at this URL, um, you can actually download a pamphlet that goes through all of these things, but more importantly, has a whole slew of other things that you could do as well. It has Walk all the exercises from today, actually, yeah. in there. And it's got all of the other details. So by all means, go exploit it, take it, share it, what have you. The goal here is simple. and Try that it is, with your teams. Yeah, tr to try it with your teams, right? Now, the important thing is, is not just about you know, putting your team in a place where you guys do a lot of improv. Like, that's not the objective here, right? Although you can absolutely do it. In fact, um, I'm in San Diego. Well, we both live in San Diego. And there's a bunch of different improv companies that are there. And you can go and get entertained by improv, of course. But oftentimes, they'll run classes. And I will tell you what, it's an unbelievable team building experience. Right? Gets everybody in the mindset of like, clearly, this has been established that we're going to fall a lot. We're going to fall flat on our face. And it's totally acceptable to do that. And that's the thing I think that a lot of us in our teams hope for, is that we can fail successfully and have a good time doing it, and improv is a great opportunity to do that. So yes, definitely, please go here, use it. Um, I hope you get a lot from it, um, and yeah, enjoy that. Uh, then the other thing is, as you notice on some of the backs, well, every other chair, um, either on the, well, in conjunction, there's uh, post-it notes as well as there is a, a pen on the table as well. Here's what we're going to ask you to do. 
Number one is, if you're, I know many of you are familiar with this, but solidifying is a very, solidifying and integrating is an incredibly imperative part of any practice. Um, this is one of the reasons why write, taking notes is super important. It can be super important, right? And that is simply because it's, even if you never reflect back on the notes, it's an opportunity for your mind to create kind of a kinesthetic binding to the thing that you just learned. It's a neural network in your brain. Actually. Absolutely. So it's actually something that you might not even be fully conscious of as happening. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, to your right on the back wall, you're going to see a large white piece of paper. And on the back of your chair, you've got, or at least every other chair, there's a bunch of sticky notes. Simple thing, and this is it. You don't have to put your name down unless you really want to. All I want you to do is I want you to write down one, two, three uh, different thoughts, discoveries, ideas that you had in either something that you learned and something we said today, or better yet, how you feel you could integrate this into your team tomorrow. Well, maybe Monday. Monday. <laughs> right? Think about it, truly, think about it. How can you bring your team together? And again, it does, I, I am a firm believer that leadership is not hierarchical, right? Great leaders can come from anywhere, so even if you feel like you are just new on a team and you don't really know those people, I totally understand, and also, even putting the intention out there is high. So think about that. Grab a piece of paper, and what I'd love you to do is write it down, stick it over there on the board as you walk out the door, and it's really that simple. Yep, and we just wanted to leave you with just these last thoughts, and that is, um, you know, here at Coding Zeal, they have partnered with me, and yes, we have um, a relationship uh, personally uh, that brings me to work with his team. But um, I would love to be able to share what we know about how theater making skills can actually um, improve uh, the 21st century skills we call it creativity, communication, collaboration, and, and um, collaboration. And if you would like to have a conversation about how we at La Jolla Playhouse can help you do that with your own teams, please just. Don't feel free uh, to come on top. Yeah. So, so one Don't of the things. Yeah. So what we're what we're going to do is we're so we're we're beta testing a couple of different things right now. So if if this is something you're like, ah, this could be something that's really helpful for the team. Uh, this is not a, a a slimy sales pitch or anything like that. No money. This is really just something like if you want to do this, we've got a bunch of different things we'd love to experiment with, and we're trying to find three different organizations to work with of various sizes. So that's it. Uh, no cost. What we're looking to do is just work with them because we, we, I feel as a software engineer myself and having a wife that's in technology, or not, well, yes, in theater. Now I am. Right, that there's a merger here. Yes, I know, true. It's really beneficial. So if this resonates for you, please let us know. No cost, none yep. of that. It's definitely just a conversation that we can have. So take some time to reflect and actually write, and then you guys have a wonderful yes and rest of your day. Yes. Thank you so much, Bye -bye. everybody. Thank you very much.